Good morning, everybody, uh, here this afternoon. We're uh, in uh, Lincroft, New Jersey, so all the way across the country on the coast of New Jersey. Uh, I'm Mike Kaysani, and I'm with Kelly Parr today. We're the principal investigators for eMake, which is uh, eBooks and mobile apps for technician education. And this is a three-year ATE project to develop uh, interactive eBooks and mobile apps for, uh, for technician education. And we will be talking to you a little bit today about uh, what we've done to date and showing you some of the examples of some of the work we've done and also demoing uh, some of the tools that we're using to do this. This uh, cover slide here comes really from uh, as this project has evolved, we've uh, spent a lot of time connecting with publishers and trying to get a sense of what publishers are doing. And more and more we're finding that the publishers really are not uh, doing much with interactive ebooks. What they're doing typically is uh, taking a, uh, a traditional textbook and turning it into uh, what I like to call a glorified PDF. Uh, they may put a layer of uh, um, interactivity on top of it, but not really the kind of interactivity that we're talking about. So, so this uh, Wayne Gretzky quote here is, is the basis for this. So we feel like we're skating to where the puck will be rather than to skating to where the puck is. And I think that uh, uh, we're probably both surprised that this late into the project, the publishers still really haven't moved their, uh, their work forward. On this slide, you'll see uh, a picture of me and my contact information, as long as Kelly, as, as well as Kelly and her contact information. And then you also have the link to our project website there, www.e-mate-bcc.org. Again, we're from Brookdale Community College, and we're dressed exactly like that today. So, uh, so that's exactly what we look like today. We split this presentation up into two sessions, so we're going to give a quick overview of the eMate project, uh, keep it very brief there. We're going to then do a uh, demo of some of the eBooks that we've developed, and we have uh, two eBooks with centers that are out for piloting and have been piloted over the fall semester, and we're just waiting on some of the evaluation data for that. We'll talk about some of the development tools do a brief intro to iBooks author and a demo, and then uh, leave about five minutes in the first session for Q&A. In session two, we're going to uh, continue the overview uh, for new attendees. Then we'll also uh, do a little bit more on iBooks author. Then we'll start to talk about some of the third party tools we're using for widgets. And so widgets are what we're using for uh, adding interactive content to the ebooks. And so the two tools that we'll look at today are book widgets. We'll uh, do an intro to that with a demonstration, and then also tumult hype. Uh, and both very inexpensive tools. Uh, we'll talk to you about the pricing for those tools and also show you links to those tools. And, and finally, we'll end that session with a little bit of Q&A. This is uh, a shorthand that our kids use. And the genesis for this project really came from some of the interaction that, uh, that we have here with students in the classroom. So uh, uh, as everybody knows, this is uh, the shorthand kids use for laughing out loud, LOL. And so uh, I think everybody's aware of that. Uh, both uh, my daughter and Kelly's daughter are away on semesters abroad uh, this week. Uh, for the next few weeks, actually. And uh, this is the way the kids communicate with us, is they send us text messages with these short little messages like this. So you have to get used to this shorthand. And another one over here, OMG. That's uh, oh my god, or gosh, depending on your audience. PMI, I get that a lot from my daughter. I'm sure m many of you do from your children as well. Too much information. IDK, I don't know. I get that from my students and from my daughter. 
PTYL. Uh, this one I had to ask my daughter what this means. Anybody uh, in, in the audience know what this means? Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Very good. Very good. All right. All right. This one, if you get a message, uh, an email message that has uh, a subject that uh, starts with this, you want to be very careful. Anybody know what that means? Not, not safe for work. Not safe for work. Yes, uh, it's not a National Science Foundation work group. That's a <laughs> National Science Foundation in West. There you go. All right. Not safe for work. Now this is the this is the one that uh, has been of interest to me lately because I get this from students all the time. They look at the textbook and they look at the price of the textbook. They look at the thickness of the textbook, the length of the textbook, the number of words and letters and text in there, and their response is TLDR: too long, didn't read. <laughs> so unfortunately, we have a whole generation of students that have this attitude that it's too long, didn't read. I even got that. I sent an interesting web article to one of my classes, and one of the students even responded with TLDR. So it was uh, uh, very uh, appropriate to what we're doing here. So the idea is that uh, students are interested in this stuff, but the traditional methods that we've been using to teach them, to the traditional textbooks, even publisher ebooks, are not engaging enough, and so what we're doing, we hope, will get through this barrier of TLDR and get students engaged in what we're doing. By the way, uh, even Wikipedia is too long for some of these students, so there's even a TLDR Wikipedia which has shortened versions of Wikipedia articles. And so hopefully, eMate is the solution to TLDR. Hi everyone, this is Kelly. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon or this morning out there. Um, as Mike started to, to talk about um, the impetus behind eMate is interactivity. Um, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, engage me and I learn. A primary uh, driving force of our project is to make every effort to engage learners. And also, follow up to our, our title slide, uh, the great one, Wayne Gretzky, said that a good hockey player plays where the puck is, but a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. Um, we truly believe that the work we're doing uh, with two national ATE centers is, is that kind of work. It's nothing we have seen that is labeled as interactive is anywhere near what we're doing. Uh, different goals, different packaging, what we're doing is, is Hopefully, we're going to. Uh, you will feel the same way. Okay, at this point, we're going to shift gears and actually show you two of the books we've been developing. Um, the first, one of the early slides we put up had our contact information and our project website. Well, we we will put that up again at the end of the session. Um, but also know that a lot of what we're going to show you today is available in Camtasia video tutorials on our project website under uh, planning resources, framework resources. So if it seems like we're going through things quickly or you'd like to see them again, know that that is there as a resource. There are also um, different links there in addition to the video tutorials as well as links to some PDFs and documents you may find helpful. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we are um, a three-year ATE-funded project, and we have been working with two national centers to develop interactive ebooks. One is the National Center for Supply Chain Technology Education. They're based in Norco, California. And what's also interesting is we've taken two completely different approaches. Uh, the book we developed in collaboration with um, the National Center for Supply Chain Technology Education as the content expert is filling a void. There was no textbook. It's uh, new courses, new curriculum, and we're starting with a clean slate, knowing that 
we can add interactivity to enhance learning and understanding with purpose. So what do we want to do knowing that we can do that? The second book, uh, we have collaborated with the National Center for Optics and Photonics Education, and they're based in Waco, Texas. And uh, Course One, Fundamentals of Lights and Lasers, is a book that they have published as a traditional textbook, a printed textbook that's been available for a while. Um, it was available as a plain uh, PDF which we would call a glorified PDF. It had some links in there to different uh, websites where you could see some elements. Um, it would have I it had icons of a calculator, for example, where you could click to see a video if you needed help in math. However, what it did was took you to a menu of about a 30-minute video and you had to know if at the point in the book it was talking about uh, scientific notation. You would have to go to the menu and find scientific notation. Well, that's assuming the student knows exactly what they didn't, what they needed help understanding. Um, something else we did with this was, uh, you know, as Mike said earlier, students are digital natives, have short attention spans, they're always online. Um, who's going? We find it doubtful that they're going to listen to a 30-minute video. So we worked with a content expert um, who's someone who has taught this for a while, so also brought that valuable experience and, and knowledge of knowing from the teacher's perspective what students traditionally have difficulty understanding. So he uh, worked with us to edit those videos down. So now, right in the book, and we'll show you this, for example, if uh, the subject on the page is scientific notation, there's a short, maybe one minute video that's targeted on scientific notation. So just uh, give me a minute, I'm going to switch gears and take you to um, an application called iBooks, which is what you can use on either an iPad or a later model uh, Mac computer to view iBooks. Our primary development tool has been iBooks Author, which is free. It's a free uh, download from the App Store if you do have the Mavericks operating system or later. Um, and what we've been working to do, and we'll talk about this more, is start with iBooks Author, and then we, we realize that not every student has an iPad that, or a Mac, that that's not the only platform out there in education. So how do we make what we're doing also accessible on multiple platforms, multiple devices? And we'll talk about that a little bit too. Um, but what's been interesting is what we've noticed is that instead of Apple making iBooks author exportable to other things, Everyone else is going the other direction. For example, in design, you can now go into iBooks Author. Um, from what we're finding, it's, it's the best tool out there to do what we're trying to do. It's too cold here. Look, it's 18 degrees where they are. What are you complaining about? No, that our bikes are I think your permission is freezing up. It's cold. You know, it's cold in here right now, and there's no heater. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, the first, it's, I can see it's slowly coming up. So I'll talk about this a little bit um, as it's refreshing. One thing I didn't mention before about the traditional printed textbook for photonics and optics education is that it had a lot of illustrations in it, but they were all black and white. Um, so something we did, we knew out of the gate we didn't have 
um, the funding and, or the time in order to pilot test this to convert everything into color. So we had both the content expert and then an engineering student on our own campus go through the book and identify figures where adding color would enhance learning and understanding. And then we had graphic design student workers from our campus as well work to add color to those. Um, I also mentioned that the original, the PDF version of the original textbook did link to some uh, websites. Problem was, there were a lot of these interactive applets, but they weren't created or maintained by Optech. So, you know, links would get broken, content wouldn't be updated. So again, um, knowing what our goal was, we had worked with the content expert to go from there were 136 or so links to various websites, and, and some were, you know, repeated throughout the text. And from there, uh, we purposely developed interactive widgets for each of the six chapters in this book. And I'll just show you, they're right in the book. And another advantage of this book is every, you don't need an internet connection to interact with everything in this book. Everything is contained in there. So I'm going to show you, this is Wave Properties. You can turn that on. <coughs> oh, that's cool. You can see I'm sliding amplitude, then changing wavelength, and you can see I can see we've got a screen up too. It doesn't, it's a smoother flow than you're seeing. The, the choppiness that you're seeing is just an artifact of the, uh, the webinar, not the actual book. So again, hit done, you're in the book. The student can go through this again and again. Uh, they could be on a bus uh, under a tree, no internet access, and still, still work with this book. Is there a particular one you want to show? This is a Young's double slit experiment. <coughs> and again, the student can interact with this. And what a faculty member can also do, they have the textbook as well, you can project from an iPad on screen. So the teacher could also demo this. <coughs> we talked about the videos before. Again, um, these aren't links to the web in this book. We had the original video files to work with and edit down. So just we're just going full screen to so give it a second. It'll make it easier for you to see. We have full screen here. Okay, and then tap. In mathematics, we use a formula as a way of symbols to write a sentence. Consider these examples. For example, you may have recalled the formula P is equal to 2L plus 2W. Well, that's really the same as a sentence that says the perimeter of a rectangle is the sum of twice its length and twice its width. Or I is equal to PRT. The simple interest earned is the product of the principal, the annual rate, and the time in years. And it's much easier to just write I is equal to PRT. Or here's one you should. Yeah, we're having a difficulty with some of the videos. Here we go. It's just slightly different from scientific notation because the exponents are always multiples of three. 
So for very large numbers, well, our exponents will be like 10 to the 3 power, 10 to the 6 power, 10 to the 9 power, 10 to the 12th power, and so on. And you'll notice that those conveniently correspond to the prefixes that you are used to seeing in the metric system, as in kilo, kilometers, and kilograms, or mega. And the reason that went large screen was because, I don't know if you could see, I tapped in a corner, so student working with the book wants to see full screen video, it's just a simple tap. It shows here. Okay, good. So a lot of um, these widgets are, that we've shown so far um, did require some help beyond um, Mike and me to develop. It, it required some programming knowledge and understanding. Um, what I'm going to show you now is something that's, that's a simpler one and more along the lines of what we're going to show you that you could realistically create on your own. Um, this is Max Planck. Um, this is called a popover. You just tap on it. And again, you know, you, more information appears about Max Planck that you can read. But it saves you some real estate in the book. And notice the student, as I scroll over it, it turns into the hand so the reader or student would know if I tap on this, it does something. And also because the um, heading says interactive. So those are indicators to the reader. Is again wave properties and what I'm doing is tapping and you can manipulate where it goes what it does by just moving moving it and interacting with it you can turn the propagation off And next, I'm going to show you the introduction to the automated warehouse book. And you'll see that these are um, very different. Um, this book is intended for uh, a less technical audience. Um, this was piloted in the fall with a high school class and a community college class. And it's for an introduction to the automated warehouse course. Um, this shows two different widgets. One was used a flashcard widget which we developed using a tool called book widgets. We're going to show you in a, a little bit. Um, but again, to progress through the flashcard, you just go like this with the arrows back and forth, front and back flip them over, and they actually look like traditional flashcards. Um, the content in this area, this particular section, is designed to help students prepare for a certification exam, which was based on a traditional face-to-face -face classroom Jeopardy game. So we took the content and developed it into individual games that could be done one-on-one, um, -on -one, and we thought it would get monotonous to have the entire thing in Jeopardy, so we mixed it up with the flashcards. But the Jeopardy games were created in Adobe Captivate, and then exported as HTML, and then added to this. And we'll talk a little bit more about the how of how that happened later on. Usually I have better guessing rate than this. Um, this book is also very uh, video and image heavy.
I apologize. We had some technical difficulties, and uh, our, we had to add a different version that didn't have all the bookmarks in. Cool. I, I, I think, again, this gives you a good sense of, of the type of things we can do in these books, uh, and, and it's a good variety between the two books, including uh, embedded YouTube videos. Uh, you can also use TeacherTube and some other tools. Uh, one last thing we want to show you is the, uh, uh, another book called uh, An Introduction to Interactive Widgets. And this is a tool that we use to help with the development process. So, so the goal of this book is to allow a content provider to have a sense of what type of interaction is available. So, uh, so we share this with people that are interested in developing interactive ebooks and working with us. And then when we start discussing their content, they can say, well, I really like the popover and the popover would make a good fit for, uh, for my ebook. And so, uh, so this book is specifically just it's a sort of a, a work in progress that we constantly update as we add new types of interactive widgets. But this is sort of a, uh, a, a tool that we use uh, internally with our partners to help uh, identify the interactive widgets that we want to develop uh, for them. This particular one is a widget gallery or a photo gallery. So again, if you have a series of photos, rather than just having them uh, uh, one after the other in the book, we can uh, basically have it as a gallery that they can swipe back and forth on their iPad or their, uh, their computer to, to uh, go between. This one, we'll show you how to do this one uh, later in the demo portion, but this is uh, a picture of an oscilloscope. And here, uh, this is an interactive uh, image. And so if you click on any one of the parts, so let's click on one of the parts here, it will zoom in and uh, describe in a little bit more detail exactly what that part does. So again, lots of different uh, interactive widgets available. We're going to show you just a sampling of some of them and how, how we can make them uh, uh, in, in the demo portion. So let's, why don't we, uh, now's a good time to move on to the iBooks author demo. Okay. <laughs> If anybody here in the room has questions, you can yes. use your teacher voice and project yeah, them. Yeah, this is time for questions while we're switching over. Yeah. I, have a, I have a basic question. Mike, this is Joyce. Yes. I have a basic question. So the sure. difference between an e-book and a website for teaching is that an e-book actually looks like a book to the reader. Um, that's what I saw on the, the slides you were showing us. And an ebook also allows you to uh, to develop a, um, a learning progression that you wouldn't get in some other interactive device, where uh, where you you lead students from one concept to another to another that builds on each other. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean uh, the we're focused on ebooks, but this could be a lesson. It could be a module in in a course, and it, it is. Um, I mean, some people, uh, because everything is ultimately can be HTML5, it could, uh, it could also be put in a web page and have this same sort of format in a web page. But, but um, it, it really, um, again, does sort of, um, because you're, you're using that, um, and again, you think about how old the concept of a book is, but because you're yeah, using yeah. that ages old concept of a book, it is uh, the idea of flipping from one page to another, 
although in a PDF you often you can scroll from one page to another, but um, but but that sort of delivery does allow you to sort of chunk it up and have a progression and a flow versus a web page. Uh, you know, you might have links and j jump around a little bit more um, uh, ad hoc. That, thanks, Mike. That makes a lot of sense. I have a similar question. Um, so, is an ebook are uh, interactive ebooks downloadable so that you can just put them right on your on your phone and go to the beach and and page through an interactive ebook, or do you have to be connected to the internet in order to um, do the interactivity? Well, it's um, you can definitely an iBooks book um, if we've created it in iBooks author and then. Exported it as iBooks. You could most definitely download that on an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac computer that has the Mavericks operating system or higher. And then, depending on how the book is built, you would or would not be able to access everything without an internet access, without an internet connection. Um, for example, the Photonics and Optics book. Um, all the videos happen to be in that book. All of the interactive widgets are part of the book, so you can sit by all means at the beach and read that book. Um, the second book, Introduction to the Automated Warehouse, um, some of it you could view without a connection, um, but some of it you could. For example, they literally bring the student into the automated warehouse through a lot of videos, and many of them are provided by industry partners, and they're on their websites. So again, without the internet, you would not have access to those videos. But um, the bulk of the book, you you would. Um, and in terms of other devices, what we've done, I know I was talking, you know, iPhone, iPad, Mac computer. What we've done with these books is exported as a PDF. And then for this, you would need an internet connection. We have made all of the widgets available on uh, online. They're HTML, so you can link to them. So if you were on a beach with Wi-Fi, yes, you could. Well, and actually, we just finished a, uh, a standalone version of the Optech book that, um, that can be viewed as a PDF with the interactive elements that doesn't require the web. Uh, the, um, Again, the workaround for the, the people that are using YouTube videos or vendor videos is to try to get permission, either try to get permission from the owner of the content to use the physical video in your content, in your ebook or module, or to, uh, to film the, uh, the content yourself to basically create your own video. So uh, for the Optech book, we were lucky in that we, uh, we had a, a, a content provider who had Created the videos themselves and still had access to the raw the raw footage that they could edit uh, as we needed. Okay, so what you see on screen now that I'm, I'm moving the cursor around is the introduction to the automated warehouse ebook in iBooks. This is it's already been created and this is the viewing mode of it. What I'm going to show you now is a little a, a quick introduction to iBooks Author, which is the tool we used to create the ebooks. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's free software. Um, something we're mindful of is that you know, you're all educators and therefore have very limited budgets. So we've tried to identify um, free or relatively inexpensive development tools that people could work with. A um, couple things to point out. Um, first thing you do in iBooks Author is choose a template. But before you get started, it's really important to organize your, your text, your images, your videos, whatever it is you're going to use to build the book. Um, the building is the fast, easy, really fun part. And the better organized you are going into it, um, the more fun uh, the experience will be and the faster it will go. Um, the one thing is, once you choose a template, there's no going back. Um, you can change, you know, pages in the book or um, a font, this and that, but the template itself, there's no going back. So we'd highly recommend that, again, know what it is you're trying to accomplish and play with the different templates before you start to build because that's one thing you cannot change. So we'll just 
choose contemporary. This happens to be the one we used for the automated warehouse book. So just to, to briefly point out some things here, um, this is the main area where you actually build the book. There's an arrow, uh, a plus sign in the upper left corner where you add pages. And I'll show you that in a bit. This is um, for anyone, I'm sure most people have most of you worked with PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, very similar concept here, mm -hmm. what you're seeing. Um, consider this big area with the uh, with space that says chapter one untitled as you are like where you're building a slide. And then over here are, are the thumbnails of different pages, just like you see the thumbnails of your slides. And the way the hierarchy works is it has chapters and sections. And it will automatically populate your table of contents with a chapter and a section. Um, but you do have the control to add other heading categories to your table of contents. So again, gives you a great starting point, and it's it's definitely you can customize it very easily. Um, this what I'm pointing to now is a chapter, and then again the hierarchy is a section, and then a page. It's very easy in iBooks Author to rearrange chapters and sections. Individual pages, however, are really difficult to move. You, it involves resnaking everything. So again, um, the more organized you are going into this, the less frustrated you'll be with the process. Because let me just show you if I go up to add pages. And I'm going to add another chapter. And then to that chapter, just add a section. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to swap the placement of chapter one and chapter two. Again, it's like very similar to PowerPoint um, keynote, like moving slides around. Something else you'll um, use a lot is the styles drawer. And there's a blue circle with paragraph symbol. So if you click on that, you have different styles. Um, this works very similarly to anyone who's used the styles in Word. If you want to make um, all of heading one 16 point Helvetica new bold, um, and then you want to change that later, it's modifying the style really fast and easy to work with. This is a, another area you would use all the time. It's called the inspector. And You'll see there's a document inspector. And this is where you would, if you wanted to require a password to open it. Again, I mentioned customizing the table of contents. Um, this is where you would add and delete what you wanted there beyond uh, chapters and sections. Uh, formatting text, uh, graphics. And the widget inspector, which is what you would um, use to add, uh, for example, on that Max Planck interactive where I told you the title wasn't so forth, this is where you would manipulate the title. And then just briefly show you, this is where you add the widgets. Um, the gallery that we showed you in the sample book, media is what you would use to add those uh, videos we showed you. A review is a little quiz you could put in. Keynote, you could pop in an entire keynote presentation 
Uh, for that matter, you could insert PowerPoint because if you have Keynote, you can open PowerPoint and save it as Keynote. And in our sample book, we even show that if you have a video that plays within your Keynote or PowerPoint presentation, it still plays inside of the book. Um, interactive image is like the oscilloscope Mike showed you. Uh, 3D is you can add 3D images. And of course, um, I certainly didn't create the one we added in our sample book. Google SketchUp has a lot of free things you can just use to add. Sliding scroll bar is just what it sounds like. Um, you can put more text in a smaller space and make it accessible by sliding. And then the popover, this is uh, like the Marconi example Mike showed you. And HTML, this is probably the most important of these because this is a tool you use to get anything created with an outside tool. For example, anything done in book widgets or tumult height. This is how you add them in iBooks Author. Um, what we also found as we needed to go from just an, an Apple platform to you know, the PDF with links to the interactive widgets is any of the widgets that were um, Mac, iBooks author only, it's really not easy to um, get them into an HTML format. So we went back, and Mike will show you this later, um, using Tumult Hype, and I can show you in book widgets, we found other ways to duplicate the functionality of the gallery, the interactive uh, image, and so forth, so that even though we're starting to develop in iBooks Author, we know that for purposes of our project, we needed accessible other ways, so we used primarily HTML to add widgets. Um, if you know you're a complete iPad classroom and it's only going to be used that way, by all means, use these, and they'll be just fine. Um, so Mike told me we're about out of time for this session. Uh, any questions at this point? The, name, the questions, what is the name of the software? Um, the software that is on screen now is called iBooks Author and it's free. If you just go to the Apple site or Google it, you'll find it. Also, if you go to the eMate project website, we have links to uh, downloads for everything. It's not for PC. <clears throat> no, it is not. So is, there's no, is there an app for converting the MacBook into a PC compatible format for um, an Android? Um, what we found, Mike uh, mentioned this before, is a, a workaround to some extent is to go from iBooks Author and you can from the software export to PDF and it it really looks like the book you saw in iBooks. Um, what's different is we had to do uh, you know an image that the student would tap on and it links to the widgets that we created in HTML that are on a website. So for those, you would definitely need an internet connection, even for the Optech book. Um, but what we're finding is, for example, I mentioned this before, InDesign, you can go back, you can go from those products into iBooks because it, it's the, you know, it's the Rolls Royce of what you can do to develop interactive eBooks, but you can't go the other direction. So that's, to date, the best um, and most efficient way we've found to go in that direction. Is there any software comparable in the, you know, PC world? Or, or Android? Um, comparable to? Well, again, where, where we see the future of these e-books going, where they're going to be cross-platform, it's going to be primarily where the entire book is going to be HTML5. So, so uh, for the pilots that we're doing, we created PDF versions with all the interactivity as HTML5. But in order to support Kindle, Android, and, and other platforms, uh, it's probably going to be uh, HTML5. And we're also looking at some EPUB options. So EPUB is fairly broadly supported. iBooks, the iBooks format is a superset of EPUB. So it's EPUB with some Apple customizations. 
Uh, so iBooks author will open or iBooks will open EPUB files. So EPUB is a, a standard. But um, uh, strangely enough, the one reader that doesn't support EPUB in, in the world is the Kindle. Kindle uses their own proprietary format. But, but so we see the, the HTML5 is probably going to be the simplest way to go multi-platform. Uh, some of the Adobe products do allow you to create the ebook and push it out in multiple formats, uh, but uh, EPUB is the only one they support that uh, will go on the Apple devices. And those tools, the, the InDesign and the other Adobe tools, don't support the level of interactivity that we're providing here. The Apple, oh, go ahead. Is there, um for the picture you had where you made the wavelength change and animate, uh, I think that's the, the feature most of us. Video is easy, PowerPoint is easy, but like how can we create interactive graphics easily? How did you guys do that? Is there uh, some kind of software to do that? Yeah, in the in the second half of the session today, we're gonna we're gonna uh, demonstrate the the two on the screen here, Tumult Hype and Book Widgets. Fairly inexpensive applications that will allow us to uh, to create some of that uh, interactivity. I was wondering about the file size. I know it's you know dependent upon the size of the book, but what are we looking at? Are we looking at terabytes in file size by the time this is done, or? No, I think the um, the final size of uh, the um, for example, the Optech book, which is um, the one with all the embedded video and all the interactivity built in, is uh, I think under a gigabyte. And uh, I think if you want to sell it on the Apple Store, the iBook Store, they they limit you to uh, two gigs of size. So uh, it does a fairly good job of of uh, compression and some of the, for example, book widgets. Now uh, one of the tools will demo one of the new features they've recently added is the ability to compress the size of the, the widgets you develop even further. But um, the, the widgets uh, uh, that use video seem to be the limiting factor. So, so if you have lo lots of large high definition videos that, that would quickly uh, ramp up the size of the ebook. But uh, for the one that we have with, with again, um, uh, 15 chapters, I think, with lots of content and lots of video, lots of uh, interactivity, uh, under a gigabyte for that one. No, if we if, if we were talking terabytes, then uh, then you know we would have to uh, uh, provide everybody with a storage area network along with the ebook. Any other questions for Mike or Kelly? Okay, so the session's ended. We're going to pause the recording, and then for those of you that want to stay for the demonstration, that'll start at 11:30. So we'll break. If you want to move to another session, then you're welcome to do that. And people who are going from another session to here, we'll give them until 11:30 uh, Pacific Standard Time to start up again. Thank you. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kevin. There's our contact information. Please contact us, and contact us if you're interested in more information and uh, have some content you'd like to uh, try to uh, make interactive. And, and if you can't get this stuff captured, then uh, you can get the information from James and Pierre from MPEC. We can give you Mike and Kelly's uh, contact information as well. Thank you. And we can see this. We can this is recorded and will be posted um, in a couple of days. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. A recording. Um, thank you to everyone who stayed for part two and welcome to the new person. Um, I'll be very brief. This is part two of a session um, about the EMATE project, which is a National Science Foundation funded project to develop interactive ebooks. Um, we're based in New Jersey at Brookdale Community College, and what we did in the first session was provided a brief overview of two of the books we've been developing with two other, with two national ATE centers, one the National Center for Supply Chain Technology Education in Norco, California, and the other is the National Center for Optics and Photonics Education in Waco, Texas. 
Um, we then started to talk about some of the tools we use to develop the books, um, knowing that everyone in the room is in education for the most part and funds are quite limited. Um, so we started to do an overview of iBooks Author, which is free software available through Apple for later model Mac computers, that's a Mavericks operating system or higher, and some supplementary third-party tools. One is Book Widget, which is uh, $49, and it's developed by a company in Belgium, which we'll talk about a little more, and then Talmult Hype. Uh, which is another relatively inexpensive tool to use with a um, relatively flat learning curve, like book widgets. Um, the goal of this is not only to develop, of our project is not only to develop interactive ebooks, but along the way document best practices, lessons learned, and share what we're doing so that any educator could um, use what we've developed to develop their own interactive, either a complete ebook. Um, an interactive lesson or just a module. Um, there's a lot of flexibility here. So what um, we're going to do is go back into iBooks Author. Okay, um, just a quick refresher. This is uh, similar to the way you work in PowerPoint. This area is where you're building the pages of the book. And I'm sorry I keep talking faster than the refresh. I have two screens going. I have to slow down as it, as it fills the screen from what you can see. Um, the refresh is pretty fast at this end, so we're fine. Oh, okay. It's really slow on our end. It must be our, our campus network. Um, you have your thumbnails over here. And with the view here, you can, you know, do thumbnails or a book outline. Again, it's personal preference. Um, book title, here's your chapters and sections, talked about the inspector, which is uh, where you get the tools to change, you know, colors, sh shading, images, and so forth. What we're going to focus on now is this widgets tool. Okay. So let's go to a page. And in terms of getting actual text in the book, for the sake of time, um, I'm not going to go through a lot of this, but we found through experience um, it's best to work with, it can be a Word document, anything, but plain text comes in better in terms of if you copy and paste something with styles, it'll bring those styles in, so it'll save you time if you bring it in plain and apply your styles here. And again, the way we got to the style drawer was we hit the blue circle with a paragraph symbol. So let's say, for example, um, to add a widget, and I'm going to show you how we did the popover, the Marconi we showed as an example. You can see it just pops in, and something else talked about in the first session was it's really important to organize everything you're going to work with before you actually start building the book. And you can see over here on the right, I have different folders. Um, so here I have a folder where I have um, the information for the Marconi popover widget. So I've got the image right here, and I just drag and drop, boom, it's there. And for the text, got my text document here ready to go. And just copy it. And paste it in. And if you'd like to make the image bigger, and say I clicked on it, like anything else, 
grab it by a corner to increase it uniformly um, or proportionally. And you can see I can put it wherever I'd like. Talked about um, in the inspector tools, the widget. So here we can click on widget inspector. And if you wanted to add a, a title to this widget, just click title and label. One thing we did in our book was we used interactive um, so that the student would know it was something to tap on in addition to getting the, the hand when you moved over it. Um, see the accessibility description. You can add text there that describes it. You can add a caption if you'd like. Um, you can change this text here. But again, there's a lot of flexibility and control here, and the key to getting there is that inspector widget. Um, the talked earlier about the uh, 3D palette or, or the interactive 3D image. Again, popped in the widget tool. I can move it wherever I'd like. I have a folder in my everything I have organized. Where I've got the 3D image here. Again, drag and drop and it's in there. Um, and I mentioned earlier, if you go to our project website, there's a section framework resources. There are tutorial videos that will show you exactly what I'm doing in the session today. So if I'm going too fast or um, if you'd like to see it again, there is what I'm showing you today and some more things as well that you can go take a look at. But again, and then as you're working, it's really nice is you can preview without you um, having to connect an iPad or anything. If you select preview, it will um, preview the entire book, but I found it's a lot faster if you do preview current section only. And what it does is it opens iBooks author and you can see Here's a preview of the book we're building. And look how I can manipulate that 3D object. And again, I didn't need to draw this. There are lots of things that are, are free and readily available. But that's how you can preview what you're doing as you work. If you have students that are in any kind of gaming program or 3D animation program, these are uh, good student projects to develop these 3D assets as well. Um, talked about adding the video files in the Optech book. Again, I went up to widgets and I selected movie. And here I have everything organized in media. Again, drag and drop, the movie comes in. You can see how um, simple it is once you have everything organized. But again, in, if, you, if you can see within these folders in the finder the way things are named and how we have text there, um, it just keeps it a lot, it, it makes it easier to build a book. And then if, have, if you have to make edits moving forward, it's best to have everything organized. Um, for example, the automated warehouse book has lots of images. We found that it was best to number them by chapter. Um, it was easier to refer to images as, you know, 1-1 one -one versus, oh, it's the, you know, forklift with the orange front. Um, so it, it just, spend making the investment before you start the build is, is definitely well worth it. Here. Question. Is there a question? Yes. Um, I assume you have to do any editing of images you're going to use prior to bringing them in. You can't edit them once you place them in the text. Um, I'm sorry. I missed the first part of the question. So the, the question is that uh, could any kind of videos or images that you have need to be edited prior to placing them into the ebook for, format, and you cannot edit once they're in the book, is that correct? 
Yes, that's correct. So, so yeah, you want to have your uh, you you can't crop or uh, do any kind of editing to images. Uh, the videos, um, if if uh, Kelly selects the video and clicks on the inspector. Okay, let me do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you do have the ability to adjust some information there in the inspector. Uh, so, for example, over here, what you're seeing is the poster frame. So that's the, uh, the 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 image that shows on the front of the video. You can do that. Uh, you can set it to uh, play automatically. But again, you can't do anything in terms of trimming or editing the video once it in, once it once it's in there. And that's why uh, we we make the point that you want to have all of your assets ready to go. Thank you. So this is really kind of a, an assembly project and you've got all of your assets together, you've got your text, uh, all of your resources and so this is the environment in which you're sort of putting everything in for the students to be able to access it in a nice coherent fashion. Absolutely. It, it's almost like um, an assembly line. Um, it, it's, or if anyone who cooks, if you're you know, making a recipe with lots of ingredients, you chop it and have everything organized in bowls before you actually start to cook or bake. Um, the better organized you are, you, it, it just, again, you just go, you know, get your text, get your video, get this, map it out. And again, um, talked about the importance of knowing your hierarchy, your chapters, your sections, because if you do want to move just one page, it's really cumbersome, but it's easy to move a chapter or a section. Um, th what I'm going to show you next, I'll, I'll redo it so you can uh, see where it came from. We talked a lot about adding HTML widgets. So again, I went to the, the box icon for widgets, click HTML, and the other thing, if, if you use the um, titles and move things, like say you rearrange movies, the numbering takes care of itself for you. So like if you move movie 1-1 one, one after movie 1-7, one, it changes the numbering for you. So with HTML, I'm going to show where I have this organized. I'm going to bring in a widget that was created using book widgets. And after this, I'm going to take you into book widgets. But again, you can see here uh, flashcards. This is a flashcards widget and it has the WDGT or widget extension. Again, just grab it, drag and drop. It's into the book. Let's preview this. Okay, tap on it. Is this who built uh, based on the layers of the OSI model? And what you can do with the flashcards is it can be text on the front, text on the back, picture on the front, picture on the back, um, whatever you want or need it to be. And this was actually created in PowerPoint and saved as an image. So again, um, try to use tools that people are using every, you know, every day anyway, and could easily do this themselves. We have another question. Uh, the book resizes itself for the different uh, devices. For instance, the iPhone, the iPad, iPad Mini, the desktop, not the desktop. Well, the desktop. It, it, it resizes itself. Um, yes. For example, uh, I use an iPad Mini, and it's fine on that. If you open the same book on a regular size iPad, it adjusts to that. Um, on a computer, you know, it opens up a certain size, but then you have the control to make it larger on your computer screen. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I'm going to um, show you Book Widgets, which is a tool that we use to create a lot of the interactive widgets. 
Um, like the flashcards, you can do things like a before and after, a crossword puzzle, a word search, a pair matching. Um, it's really, there are a lot of options which I'll show you. Um, Book Widgets, the company I mentioned earlier, is based in Belgium. Um, it's four guys, recently expanded, doubled in size. They're half a world away and they're unbelievably responsive. Um, they modified their frame sequence widget for us. Um, we found that um, we needed to include a lot of images that were more of a portrait or vertical orientation and they were either getting cut off or you couldn't um, resize them proportionally. So they modified their widget to accommodate our project. Their attitude was, hey, if you need that, odds are someone else will too. Um, and if you go to their, their website, it's unbelievable. Um, they have great tutorials, good examples. They're very responsive if you ask for help. Uh, this particular tool is $49 a year uh, single user license education pricing. And I will just show you a flashcard. Just hit create new widget. And one thing that's really cool about um, book widgets is up in the upper right hand corner it says load example. So if you click on that, it builds, it, it, it has something to get you started. And then if you hit preview, like they not only, it not only shows you, okay, here's, you know, a card with a photo on the front, text on the back another one with photo and text, with just text on the back, and then when you close it out, it shows you exactly how they built it. So it's very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, spreadsheet is another one we used in the automated warehouse book. Um, again, you could do any, what you can do in Excel for the most part. Not everything in Excel, but you can do um, set up cells so they tally uh, total automatically and so forth. Pair matching is another one we used. Uh, we had a a simple black and white plain graphic in the warehouse book that was screwdriver heads. Um, so we broke it apart. We had one of our graphic design students draw, redraw the images and broke it up into a game. Um, this is the one that's part of the software. But again, um, let's see. Match pairs, but again, it can be text and text, picture and picture, anything you want, and then to re-clear it, you do a garbage can, uh, trash it and start over again. Frame sequence is something else we used a lot. Um, you notice this example, sorry I'm talking faster than the uh, Okay, um, this uses it as a timeline, but think about it. Anything could be in this, in this image area. Um, we did one example where we took this, the seven layers of the OSI model and had it go through that way. It can be a sequence, it can be a process, it can be just images. So just because they're using it um, as a sequential timeline, um, there is a the flexibility there for you to have it do what you need it to do. By, by the way, there is a Windows version of this application now. So you could, what I'm showing you right now, you can create on a PC. And they also have an app for the iPad, so uh, if you don't want to do an entire uh, lesson book module, you can just develop some of these interactive widgets that could be a standalone.
Are you mm -hmm. looking for the name of the app? Yeah. Um, Kelly or Mike, can you re uh, refresh us as to which application this is that we got from Belgium? Um, this is Book Widgets. Book Widgets. Mm -hmm. And it's a $49 single user education license. And they, I mean, it's amazing. They're always adding new widgets and improving the functionality of those that exist. Um, they also recently had, um, just a, a end of 2014, had an update. Uh, it used to be when you created a widget and put it into iBooks Author, if you modify, if you needed to tweak the widget, say you found a typo in it or something changed, you had to go back, um, re, you know, work it in book widgets, remove it from the book, and put it back in the book. Um, now, from within iBooks Author, you can edit the widget. Um, you can also then select it to update all widgets in your book. So again, the, the more organized you are, knowing where your stuff is, the better off you are. But again, they're making it easier and easier for you to not only create things to devote, but to maintain and improve things. Where do you buy the book widgets? Like where, is it through the Chrome store or? Um, book widgets, there's a link on our website and we'll show it again um, after the demo. It, it, you just download it from their site to buy it that way. And I think that was the one you had to do through PayPal. I think it might, I, from what I recall, and I could be wrong, uh, I think you may have to purchase it with PayPal. Is there any uh, issue with licensing? If you're using the book widgets to create a book, and then if you sell the book, um, is there a royalty involved with the number of copies that you sell that goes back to book widgets, or is you just use it, you buy it once and that's it, or uh, are there any residuals that would go to them? No, I, I, I'm at their site now and there are no royalties for any of the versions, uh, whether it's the educational or the commercial version. Okay. But again, um, this example of this workshop worksheet shows you just a glimpse of what's possible. So this is a little bit different than having a video uh, or an image that you imported you can't edit it there, but with the book widgets, you can do your editing within the book itself. Um, you can do, okay, so when the book is, is exported or shared to iBooks, then you can't change it there. But you can go back into your um, like source file, so to speak, into iBooks Author, where I just showed you where we clicked the, it looks like a cardboard box and input the, um, H, selected the HTML widget and then dragged and dropped it in there. Um, yeah. Let me just... Yeah, if you go to, see I've got the, um, the inspector up and the widget inspector. You can see right here it has the flashcard OSI book widgets. You could choose that and you could go in and, and update stuff from within the book. Okay. Is that software you download or you, it's like a web app and you have to be online and you need to create things? Book widgets. Like. Book, book widgets is a download. It's not. It's not a web-based app. It's a download, and the the forty-nine dollar pricing is a, a yearly subscription. So basically, you just pay that every year, and uh, again, no royalties, and you can use the widgets in an unlimited number of books. You're not limited to putting them in a single book. So I'll just show you quickly how you. Um, well, I'll, I'll go through a build of flashcards. And we'll put a term here. Um, so the front will have application layer. The back we want to put an image. So, and then what we have to do, select here. We want image only. Um, you could have image and text. And then here it's, it's like any any browser. You just Let's go find the image.
Okay, then you can preview down in the lower left corner. So here's our flashcard. Flip it over. Okay, looks pretty good. Hit the back arrow and then do save as. Pop it on the desktop and we'll put it uh, Okay, I just saved it to my desktop. Let's go back to iBooks Author. Put in a HTML. Okay, here's, I hope you can see my desktop where I saved it. Just do a drag and drop. Preview it. Okay, and there's our the flashcard we just created in book widgets. Flip it over. There's the image. Done. Um, so again, I hope you can see how if you have all of your materials there, it wasn't like you know I clicked it and then had to go create my image for the application layer. Um, the more time you spend getting everything in order, uh, the easier it is to actually work with this in, in iBooks Author. Question. Any questions? Yes. Can the widgets be used? On, are they used only in iBooks Author, or can they be used if you're creating an HTML file? Can you use use the widgets there also, just by itself, HTML by itself? Yes. Uh, these are generic. So, so the, one of the reasons why we picked this tool is because these are HTML5. These can be used in iBooks Author. These can be used in any uh, any modern browser. So you could put it in a, a Moodle shell for a uh, an online course. You could put it in uh, uh, you know uh, just a, a generic web page, WordPress, TypePad, whatever you like. So, so whatever uh, whatever tool you're using. Thank you. Um, now Mike is going to give you a glimpse of Tumble Hype. A couple of people here were on the site for the book widgets and could not find a Windows version. Um, oh. Give me a second and I'll find it for you. Someone did find it. Our site was the uh, um, um, you have to say that you're, it, it's the link if you're creating it for um, I for um, uh, iTunes U assessment. I think because uh, only the Mac version builds the widgets. The other one will just build HTML5 content, not the not the widgets that would be Mac appropriate. Again, the widget is specific to the Mac, so it's not it wouldn't work on a PC. So the that's why uh, you need to make sure you select the right uh, uh, target. Alright, so it works in both. Another question? You can't make the widget once so that it works for both platforms. You have to make it from scratch for the other version. Uh, the Windows version? Um, I haven't I haven't tried um, opening the uh, I haven't tried opening a uh, a widget created in on the PC on the Mac um, to see whether we could load that into that version, but um, the, the format of the widget on the Mac is really just a folder uh, with the assets in there with an extension w.wdgt. Uh, uh, so, um, so if you have the HTML5, it's easy enough to create a widget from that. And we do have instructions on our site on how to do that. So, so you could use the, uh, the Windows-based version to create the HTML5 content and then with a little bit of uh, manipulation convert that to a widget. It's fairly straightforward. Website bookwidgets.com? 
I found so that again, the version, and there's a link that then links you to download it through the map. So they must be in transition with this. Are you on a Mac? No, I'm a PC. That's a PC right there. Yeah. Um, Okay. Was that a question or we just having a discussion? A discussion about the circularity of finding a Windows version on their website. It links you back to the Mac version. <coughs> That's okay. We'll find it. We'll go find it. Okay. Ke Kelly found it, so she'll update the website to, m to make sure that there's a specific link to the, uh, to the uh, Windows version. Okay. Thank you. So what I'm going to talk about is an application called Tumult Hype. And so uh, the company is Tumult and so the application is Hype. And if you've uh, been around as long as I have, uh, if you remember HyperCard back in the old original Mac days, uh, this will remind you a lot of HyperCard. And so HyperCard uh, uh, had a lot of colleagues who loved HyperCard and unfortunately uh, was never maintained and uh, there really hasn't been an alternative to HyperCard. But if you take a look at um, what this looks like here, what we have is essentially scenes. So I've expanded here the hide scenes here so we have the scenes shown here. And so each one of these scenes is essentially a slide and we can jump from scene to scene. We can also uh, if you look here in the timeline, we can also create animations within the scene. So this is a fairly powerful program and it's about um, $30 for educational licensing. So it's $30 uh, for this particular application. And so if I open a couple examples here, I can show you uh, exactly um, what we can do with this. And again, we have on our website, uh, uh, if not everything is up yet, it, it will be, but essentially what what we're trying to provide is not only instructions on how to do this, but even give you some of the assets so that then you can build these with the, uh, build the examples that we go through. So there are videos on how to do these uh, as well. So I'm going to open up, uh, remember Kelly showed uh, one example she showed is the popover. And for the popover, that was, that is a iBooks author widget. So it's one of the, sort of proprietary widgets in iBooks author. And the, the problem with that widget is that if you uh, build that widget, then it's locked into iBooks author. You're locked into that application. You can't go cross-platform. So we've endeavored to take everything that we've done in our uh, iBooks versions of the books and convert those or have some alternative to those widgets that are HTML5. And Book widgets, which uh, Kelly demoed, and now Hype are both very uh, uh, useful for that uh, purpose. So if you take a look at the way this particular one works, and let me see if I can, uh, so I have here the scenes here. So this one is just two scenes. So this is a scene here. So it's just an image of Marconi here uh, on a boat uh, in this scene. And then I have a second scene. And what I've done is the same image in the same location, and now I have uh, a text box here, uh, a, a rounded uh, rectangle here with the text in it. And in this case, if you bring up the inspector, again, Mac uh, uses the language or the, the nomenclature of inspectors, but if you bring up the inspector here, and I'll drag it over here so we can see it better, and I have a uh, actions inspector, and so with the picture selected here, you'll notice that I can pick what type of pointer. I can pick then on mouse click or tap, jump to scene, and then I have the scene here. And you can just pick, in this case, I'm just picking Marconi with popover or Marconi with pop is what I've named the scene. So up here uh, in the scenes, you can just click on the scene title here or double click on it, and then you can rename these whatever you like. Uh, you can leave them with the defaults, obviously, scene one, scene two, scene three, whatever. But, um, but it's helpful to give them uh, names that are meaningful. But in this case, it's just jump to that scene when I tap on this picture. And we have different transitions that we can use. This is crossfade. We can swap. And then how long that transition takes. Uh, and then if I 
go to that scene, you'll notice that now this scene, if I click on this picture, the actions inspector, I see on mouse tap or click, I have jump to scene Marconi, so that jumps back to the first slide. And I've done the same thing here for the text box. If I click on that, that also will jump back to the first scene. So very simple, took about really two minutes. If you have the assets, you have the text, it really takes no time at all to create this. And if we preview it here, I can preview it in a browser. It's going to launch our browser here. And you can set it up to work with whichever browser you prefer. This is Chrome. So now if I click on the picture, notice I get the hand anywhere inside the picture. If I move outside, I don't get the hand. So it gives you uh, the user a nice visual cue. Click on it, and you'll see that uh, because the two slides are identical except for the text box, you don't even really notice that the slide changes. All you see is that text box sort of appearing. And then I can click on either the picture or the text box, and it reverts back. And you can adjust the timing. You can adjust the transitions uh, as needed to be able to uh, customize this and make sure that it's doing exactly what you need it to do. So that was uh, the solution that we came up with, for example, for that popover that we wanted to be able to include in the, the interactive ebooks, but we didn't want it to be locked into, uh, into that particular format, the, uh, the iBooks author format. And if we look at what we can do with it, we can actually export it as pure HTML5. So we can export it to a folder. So it's going to take all the assets, save it to a folder. We can export it as a iBooks author widget which then we can just drag and drop the way Kelly showed you into an HTML widget. We can export it as a video or an animated GIF. Uh, you're seeing a lot more uh, animated GIFs now. And also we can just export it directly to Dropbox if, uh, if we're collecting all of our assets on Dropbox, for example. And here's the preview again. And you notice that uh, we have Chrome, Firefox, and Safari installed on here so you can uh, preview it in any one of those, uh, those particular browsers. So that's an example of how we would do the Marconi popover. Now, one of the things that is, is somewhat limiting, because again, this text box comes from this elements here. So there's a uh, rectangle and a rounded rectangle. So it's a matter of just dragging and dropping the rounded rectangle, adjusting the size. You can change the background color over here in the inspector. So if I click on the inspector here and click on the element inspector, you notice I can, oops, that's my window there. We can change the color. We can change the radius of the corners. We can change uh, whether or not it's uh, a solid dash line, whatever. We can also change the opacity of the color. Uh, we can put no color if we like, whatever we like. So lots of features there that we can do with that. And then to type inside it, we just double click inside here and just type is a popover. And you also have a text inspector where you can go in and adjust the justification of the text, the size of the text, which font you use, and so on. And again, the nice thing about any of these widgets you create, these are cross-platform by default. So you can use these in your existing uh, learning management system. So whether it's Blackboard or Moodle or uh, Canvas, which we're using at our college, you can pop it into uh, an iBook like we're doing, or you can just use it on a web page. Some other examples that I want to show you. So let me close this one and minimize my browser. So that's the Marconi with popover. The Marconi with popover uh, is a simple one. Another one that um, is a little bit more uh, difficult is something uh, we use for a gallery. So a photo gallery, there are a few different ways to do that. And uh, I'm going to show you one over here. So let me actually open this one. And this was from one of the books that we created. And so in the book, 
what they had was from uh, some material data sheets uh, for different types of, of uh, glass and silica here. So we have fused silica, fused quartz, pyrex, zero dur. Uh, in the original book, what they had was uh, uh, one uh, figure with all four of these image, images superimposed. And there was no color, there was no differentiation between line weights or line types. And so we recreated each of these and then used the hype here now to create a, yes, question? No, this is neat. Okay. We, uh, we used hype now to take what was just a static image in uh, the original version of the book and create a, um, an interactive or a uh, image gallery. And so if I bring up the inspector now, you'll see drag this over. Uh, the first thing is uh, on top of the image, I just added the text box here with the name of the material and, and again, change the background color and then you can position that anywhere inside here that you like. Um, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can readjust the size of the image by just dragging and dropping the corners here. Uh, but what we did now is instead of using the uh, action inspector over here like we did before, we also have in here we have a scene inspector. And so in the scene inspector, we actually can have uh, actions here. So in this case, jump to scene is my action. And um, jumping to the next scene, so that's the fused quartz is the next scene for me. And the transition is push left to right. And you notice here what my action is. It's, it's grayed out there. Let me make my, see if, uh, if I can go full screen here. Um, doesn't make my inspector any bigger, which is what I suspected. But on swipe left is the action. So basically here you have on scene load, on scene unload, on any timeline complete, on key press, key down, key up, swipe left, swipe right, swipe up, swipe down, on drag. So all of the typical interactions you would expect on a touch screen. And so in this case I have push right to left. So basically it's going to push it in this direction here towards the transmission axis over here. And if I jump to the next scene, show you the next scene over here, this is fuse quartz. This one also has swipe left and it's jump to scene, next scene, push right to left and I have a duration. But now I've also added swipe right. So this says jump to scene, previous scene and push left to right. So basically it appears as if you're sliding these panels left or right depending on what you're doing. Right? So let's go ahead, I'm going to preview this one. So that's going to open in a browser. And it's a little harder to do the swipes on a touch screen, but you can see there uh, if I grab and drag, I have the ability to do that. And that's what it looks like on a touch screen. Right? And you could make these bigger, you could make these smaller, whatever you needed to do, you could adjust them. But again, very simple to make and now we went from what was a static image with uh, black and white, no differentiation between the curves to now a image gallery where I can swipe left and right very easily to see the difference between these. We have a couple more minutes and then we'll have questions so let me uh, just show a couple more examples and then um, uh, we'll take questions. And, and uh, we have videos that will be going up. Some of them are already there on the website. Other videos are in progress uh, on how to build these. Uh, so this is, um, this is a little uh, animation. So this one, if, if you look here, show scenes. There's only one scene here. But what we've done now is we actually have an animation where we have these packets coming in and we are categorizing or classifying the packets. So this is a uh, class of service. And so this is a router over here. And if I hit play, and let me, this one we normally set to loop. 
we have these packets come into the router. The router looks at the tagging on the packets and decides which bucket to put them in and then makes the determination from there. And so this was just sort of a proof of concept that we could do this, but you can see how simple it is to make something like this. And each one of these is really just rectangles of different sizes that we just have sliding across the screen or animating. Uh, so then if you look at packet A, so this is packet A, uh, and let me drag the timeline back there, and you'll see that packet A, if I get to where I am on the timeline, so this is where it is when it falls into the voice bucket, but if I go before there, it's right on the router, and then now it actually, and so what I'm actually doing, you have the ability to adjust the motion, so you can have it move from point to point, and you also have control of, for example, down at the bottom here, if I expand this a little bit, so I have my motion path, I have opacity. So, so with this particular one, what I've done is it's transparent for just a brief moment there, then appears, so it seems to, so it's sitting there the whole time, but it just appears right after the timeline starts and then begins to move and slide up there. So you sort of fool the viewer by thinking that it's just appearing there as the other packets are sliding in. So very cool little transition that we can make of, uh, and animations that we can make with these very simple little tools. And so uh, if you're interested in something like this, uh, you know, reach out to me and to Kelly and we can provide you with more info. Uh, the last one that I want to show and then we'll take questions is uh, Dan Kaminsky did a, uh, a proof of concept for a DNS uh, cache poisoning attack. And so this is a little bit more involved, but this is the title slide that explains it. You have a start button here that starts the animation, and then we have it go through step by step. And you'll see lots of stuff going on there. We have little circles here or ellipses um, that move around. And I will go ahead, let me preview this one just so you can see what it looks like. But, um, but this, this is one that I'm working on uh, recording videos and setting up the assets for this one uh, for our website right now. So this one will be available as an example. But you'll see that we can zoom in, have the text move, and now we have this, uh, this little packet being sent here to the victim name server. And now we start flooding the victim with forged reply packets. So think about uh, trying to explain a concept like this to, uh, to your class uh, and in the traditional way that we do. Uh, in this case, uh, we're doing it with this animation. And I use this with a couple of my classes where I actually run this animation and loop it as I'm explaining it in a face-to-face -face class. So it's, it's much more visual, much easier to see exactly what's happening here when you can see the attack, uh, this, this uh, proof of concept attack happening. And that finished there. But in the end, it's very simple to, very simple to make. If you, so if you look there, basically, if I just drag the slider here, you can see what's happening in here. So in this case, that text box is moving down. The image is getting bigger, so it appears to zoom. And then now this, this ellipse here, which is just a red circle, appears. And then it's just following a path. And so the path is just a, as simple as if I click on this circle here, you'll see you just pick keyframes. So it's at this position at this time, this position at this time, at this corner at this time, and then here at the end time. And it's as simple as that. Just uh, turning on this record button, placing it, shifting the time, place it again. Uh, very simple to build, and we're, you know, you'll be, if, if, once you see the video of how this is done, you'll see uh, how simple that is to do once you, once you know how to do it. So we'll stop here. It's about, uh, we're keeping them from lunch, Kelly. So we'll, we'll uh, I'm just seeing it is linked to our website under development. Okay, that's for the, uh, yeah, I just um, added links to download the trial, the book widgets for Mac and PC. Um, 
if you go to the eMate website and go to development tools, um, basically they're the same link, but for Mac you want to, you'll see when you go to the page, you want to go to select I need widgets for iBooks author and for PC you select I need exercises for iTunes U and once you click that then you'll have the option for the PC download. What's this website? This is our project website so uh, so it's back on the slide there. Let me go. So this is under so if you expand the framework here and then go to development tools, that's what Kelly was referring to. So while yes. I was while I was talking, she updated all of these and showed the development tools. BCC. Dot org. Put, please put back your uh, the previous slide that's got your website. There you go. Sure. Right there. <coughs> dub dub dub. The bottom one. And that's where you're going to start to see the tutorials and the assets for all of these so that you can uh, download them and start trying to build your own interactive elements using our examples and then start to pop in your own content. All right, so again, thank you for your patience today with the technology and with the distance. Uh, hopefully it will be a little bit warmer than 18 degrees tomorrow here in New Jersey. Uh, we miss uh, not being there in San Francisco with you. Uh, would have had a great time seeing everybody and getting around the city there, but, um, uh, but uh, this was uh, at, at least uh, a way that we could still be there with you virtually. Uh, so questions? They want to go to lunch. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mike and Kelly. Yes. Please take a picture of this screen if you want to contact us or get to our website. And again, Have a great lunch, everybody, and a great conference. Thank you, guys. Thank you.